Yo, what's happening my dudes? Thank you, all of you. And I mean this from the bottom of my heart. Thank all of you for subscribing and uh, watching and liking and commenting on these videos. It really does mean so much to me. Um, and now I'm reaching over 200 subscribers now to 211, funny enough. Um, uh, I feel quite proud because if you don't know, I actually used did have I did used to have a YouTube channel that I lost, and I got about 100 subscribers on that, and I thought I'd never get reach that again. But I put out a video saying to you guys, what should I do for 200 subscribers? I didn't get much feedback from people. Um, they just said, well done, Henry. So it's nice for you. If you can't think of anything, that's fine. So instead, I decided to get inspired by Luke Reviews' video because he's got he's got 100 more subscribers than me. He did a Q&A. So instead of doing a Q&A, I thought I might do a top 10 video. And what's better than a top 10 video, but then Sixth Doctor top 10. So not just being a 200 subscriber video, it is also a top 10 Sixth Doctor stories, or well, top 10 best Sixth Doctor story. So before this video starts properly, I just want to say that um, out of the little comments I did get, um, I love all of you for this, uh, one person, uh, how do you say your name? Gizmo Dramacorn. Gizmo Doramacorn, also known as Lucy, I won't say her last name just in case you don't want me to, sent this lovely bit of fan art. So, shout outs to her and links in the description as well. And also I've got two people who have now deleted their comments, but also are telling me to kill myself with slit my wrists, or also to kill myself with like a rusty scissor blade or something. <sighs> For like a proper YouTuber now, YouTuber? Yeah, for like a proper YouTuber now. So, without any further ado, let's get into our top 10 Sith Doctor stories. Starting with number 10. I see you've been busy, whereas you have been stupid, Doctor. Prerogative of a Time Lord. Now, number 10 may be slightly controversial because it is a very Marmite story. Um, but I'm going to go with Resurrection of the Daleks. Yes, barely scraping the top ten it is Resurrection of the Daleks. I completely love this story. It is. Um, it got a 7.5 out of 10 for me. I like it that much. But compared to the rest of these that have got even higher than that, it is it is comparatively quite low. Um, it does have problems such as, yes, the DJ can be slightly annoying with his fake American accent. You know, all your old dead people. Like, uh, sorry, um, Davros is, is a very good villain, he's very cunning. And uh, out of three uh, 80s Dalek stories, this one's normally put at the bottom. I would say it gets better as it goes along, but that's probably because I haven't watched. Uh, um, I didn't properly watch Resurrection of the Daleks. I've watched Remembrance quite a lot, and I've seen this probably about three times. Um, but I think it, uh, the Dalek, 80s Dalek stories gets better as it goes along. So overall, it is a really highly enjoyable story, and one that people gloss over on Dalek stories that I think, no, it's such a good Davros story, because the Doctor's barely in it. And yes, that is because Eric Sayward was a bit of a knob at the time, but you can really see that what the universe is like without the Doctor, because for the first part, Davros is just a mean bastard, literally to everyone. He's very cunning and manipulative, and when the Doctor comes in, he's, he's, he's even lost. In the story, the Doctor does not win. Basically, he sort of does, but he doesn't. There's so much at loss here, and he loses so much because of it, that when you go watch Remembrance, you think, yeah, he's deserved this. Number nine. Don't do it! Forget about me, please! Forget you, Mrs. Clark. Never. Number nine is, yes, an audio story, funny enough. You didn't think that I was only going to have TV stories in this, did you? If you did, you're a bit of a stupid, aren't you? 
put the end of the line. And this is the first story in the Last Adventures box set. It is such a strong box set. The first time I listened to it, it I thought it's quite weak. And in some places it is quite weak. But because this is Colin's last appearance as the Doctor, it really, really helps um, to actually see that he's a part of this. And he does give such a fantastic performance. All, all the cast gives a fantastic performance. And, oh, it's breaking apart there. The Doctor in it is quite strong. It, ha it plays with such an interesting idea. Like, every every timeline is like a time track, basically. And all talking about the trains and how that time just keeps going and sometimes trains switch between jumping talking about how timelines change and if you have two points and two points uh -huh, I see what you did there because when you change points it means you're changing direction in trains I get you um, but when you change track you change time and then there's a equal and opposite reaction for every action if you went one way the uh, is going to be a total opposite one who went a completely different way and one person doesn't understand this so goes a bit insane all the cast in this is quite strong uh, but the reveal at the end of the villain is just weird uh, number eight how are you doing this how am i doing this doctor wouldn't you like to know soon there will be virtually no limit to what I can do. Jumping back into this again, another audio story, it is The Brink of Death, the actual last Safe Doctor story. Well, this story here, yes, I agree that it's a much more big finishy story than an actual regeneration story. Um, it is definitely not as good as Parting of the Ways, Bad Wolf, uh, twice upon a time, but he's quite a lot better than uh, Time of the Doctor, uh, the TV movie of the Seventh Doctor. Basically, it's average, it's between like good to bad regeneration stories. And for, for my favourite Doctor, originally I did give it a six when I first listened to it, but when re listening to it, I thought, yeah, there's enough elements here to boost up two spots. Colin Baker acts his complete heart out with his last story. I really enjoy The Brink of Death as a story. Colin's amazing in it as the Sixth Doctor, as he always is with Big Finish. Michael Jaston as the Balliard is also top notch. The only thing that do really bring this story down is it doesn't really feel like a regeneration story summing up the Sixth Doctor's era. It feels like an idea for a regeneration story that they wouldn't be able to do unless it was done as a Big Finish story. Is very paradoxical and the ending doesn't fully make sense. I'll pro probably want to do a theory about it, but basically, it's the sixth doctor sort of committing suicide to save the entire universe. Fearless, feisty Philippa Jackson. Yeah, I don't know who you really are. I'm afraid you won't be going anywhere. This episode did bring many firsts to me, bringing. Uh, the uh, Henry Jago and Gordon Lightfoot, and also Flip, who I thought was a really great fresh breath air that brought that she brought to the Sixth Doctor audio ventures. Now I do admit that she did get slightly annoying in parts, but overall a very new Who type of companion done right because it's a new person from the future of the Sixth Doctor who's from the 80s and going back into the past. It just seems a bit more interesting than what the new Who does, always having a person from now at times, can't we with the people from the future? That's why I really like Nardole. So, moving on to number six. <laughs> number six, finally going back into the DVDs with Attack of the Cybermen. People say this is probably Colin's, one of Colin's best stories, and I have to agree that the Cybermen in it are bloody brilliant as villains in this. Probably every 80s Cybermen story is good. Uh, well, the Seventh Doctor one, uh, Silver Nemesis, is a bit patchworky in places, but the first 
three Cybermen stories, Earthshock, uh, the Five Doctors, and Attack of the Cybermen, I do have to say, are some of the best in, Do in Doctor Who's history. Just look at that cover, you can see there's going to be action in there. It splits up part one and part two. Part one is mainly set on Earth, or part two is mainly set on, it's not Mondas, it is... What's me? Don't worry, Heather, I will! <laughs> Somehow! You really won't, you know! But don't you worry, Doctor! Halfway now, and jumping back into the audio realm, we have Vampire of the Mind with an 8.3. Now, this has to be one of the most interesting audios I've heard in a while because it plays with the mind. It doesn't mean Vampire of the Mind. It has uh, Alex McQueen as the master, who I think is quite good cast choice. He looks very masterish. Anyways, I think he'll play a great Lex Luthor in like the DC. You could say this is a somewhat sequel to the Sea Devils because uh, that's what the master is in this story. Uh, yeah, and being that he's a scientist and the doctor thinks he's worked the master out. The master basically has the doctor wrapped up and he's in, uh, wrapped around his finger with the entire story. And it, it feels so earthbound. Like the Doctor just, it feels like an average day for the Doctor with the Master in it. And in some respects, people might say that is a bit bad. I feel it's quite enjoyable because we don't really get to see that in Doctor Who quite a lot. We have to see, oh, adventure, action, this is a special occasion, yeah. But this is basically the Doctor just chilling for most of the story and there's the Master around here. And it's only in like the final part where we actually see the Doctor get back into doing all these adventure things that he normally does for Doctor Who audio adventures. And the master and mind wiping and this thing called a mind leech. Was it called a mind leech? I believe it was called a mind leech. And that I, that I think is a really weird idea, but it works so well in this context, mainly because it's a bit of a weird story. Uh, while I was in the Rani's TARDIS, I made uh, an adjustment or two. Well, slightly controversial, because I know not a lot of people like the story, but it is Mark of the Rani. Yes, Anthony Lee in the story is playing second fiddle to the Rani, and he does it again later, so he doesn't properly get to go against the sixth Doctor, but he still does seem quite menacing. He's always playing between, behind the lines, and it is a mainly Doctor and Rani story, but the Master's there, and he just puts a spanner into all their works. You think it's going to be an average story against the Doctor and the Rani, but it takes place with three of them and the amount of times that people say oh we should have a story again with the Doctor Master and the Rani or the Doctor and the Rani this I love that it's a Colin Baker story because it's my favorite Doctor with two other Time Lords Mr. and Mrs. Um, Bad Time Lord as Pip and Jane Baker called them I am so Jamie McCrimmon I am another aspect of him just as he is of me eh? I was him he will be me who will I be Moving now on to number three, and number three and number four are quite interchangeable because it is the two Doctors also getting a 9.7 out of 10. So the rating for this and uh, for this story and that story are both uh, are the same. So they're interchangeable because they're both such good stories. But I think I like this one just slightly better. That's why it got higher. This was mainly because it was one of the first ever Doctor Who stories I watched. Illegally, yes, because of um, Daily Motion, but what are you going to do? Shoot me? So, yeah, people say it is dragged out and it's got way too many elements in it that don't need to be a part of it. I say, yeah, well, yes, it does have elements that could have been taken out, and there are many Robert Holmesy things that are quite apparent in this that he has put into it. Again, the Son Tyrants that he created, but it throws so many elements that I've just wanted in a Doctor Who story for ages. Like, um, with multi-Doctor stories all the time, in all the, the multi-Doctor stories, we just have the two Doctors meeting, they're like, ah, oh, yes, hello, Doctor, how are you? Ah, oh, yes, I'm good, Doctor, let's defeat this enemy. Instead, it's the sixth Doctor going back in time, basically, to save one of his previous selves. And 
I don't know why they don't do this more often. I think that would have been a much better idea to do for Twilight Spell and Time. So the first Doctor had a bit more reason to be in that story. If you take the first Doctor out of Twilight Spell and Time, you don't really lose much, do you? People say that Petra Chan overshines Colin Baker. I don't think that for one bit. I think they play off each other brilliantly. Um, Jamie in this is really strong. Nick O'Brien in it is very strong as well. And one of the this is the only story that actually has the Doctor, and, uh, the Sixth Doctor, and two companions that I really think should have been the norm for the Sixth Doctor era, like bringing a male companion for Perry to talk to, because it works so well in this story. Yes, it is Jamie, and that's a character who we've got to know from like the 60s, but that's what they should have done because it works so well in this story and the sixth doctor and jamie works so well they do it quite a lot on big finish for the sixth doctor and jamie it's just a shame that we only got about four seconds of the second doctor and perry like a companion swap that was such a great idea i am dying oh that's okay the dead will walk and all that doctor yes h6 h7 so Moving on to number two, and we're jumping back in with another audio adventure being another Cyberman story, The Reaping. This got a 9.9, .9, just one point away from getting 10. You could say it is a slight sequel to Attack of the Cybermen. I wouldn't say that, but it does feel like that because of the Cyber Leader. I really think they should have got David Banks to come back to do the story because that would it, that probably would have got it. It's one extra point if they had David Banks. But they got Nicholas Briggs doing it, and it's just mm. the story is probably the bleakest and darkest Sixth Doctor story. And throughout his entire era, he has had he has dark and bleak all over. Attack of the Cybermen, hands being crushed. Um, the, the episode with Sill. We have people being dropped in acid, you have them being hung by a noose, the sick doctor just he, he, he's dying. Um, in the two doctors, you have some tyrants basically just melting to death, being exploded. Like, this got quite a lot of darkness in the sick doctor's era, and that's one of the things what I love about the sick doctor era. And Perry finds that, and Perry almost swears at one point, I thought, oh, that always makes me laugh. And that she finds out that her. Um, father or adopted, not adopted father, but. And when Perry looks into the gold box, it shows her all the news and it shows her that her father has died. And she can't go back in time and change it, but she wants to be there for her family because there's no, it's, it's such a big time. So it does take elements from Planet Fire as well. And the Sixth Doctor may feel like he's playing second fiddle to Perry in this story because it is a mainly a Perry story for part one. But there's two plot, plot of Perry and a mystery about how this how this person got turned into a Cyberman and plot B with the Sixth Doctor. The Doctor is the second plot. And again, he's trying to figure out how someone can be turned, how a dead person can be turned into Cybermen. Until dead people weren't turned into Cybermen, thanks to Moffat. That's not a bad thing, Moffat. Well done on you, it's quite a good idea. So, to round up all these stories, um, we've had Revelation of the Daleks, The End of the Line, The Brink of Death, Stage Fright, Attack of the Cybermen, Vampire of the Mind, Mark of the Rani, The Two Doctors, The Reaping, and for my final one, honourable mention. With this, you would have thought I brought out a DVD or CD, and I would have, but if this, if I could have put this on the list, it really would have got probably number two. A lot of these stories are bloody brilliant. Do uh, Sixth Doctor Voyager that I think is probably some of the best comics I've ever read. Not just that it's because it's Doctor Who, I mean that seriously. Everybody who worked on it seriously deserves a medal for how brilliant this story really is. And there's a character in here in the story of Polly the Glot, this man, who completely looks like disgusting and everything, and I had no idea, but you really, I really felt for this character, even though he's a complete alien. The Sixth Doctor in it is just completely standout and feels exactly like Colin Baker, and you could, 
he looks exactly like him as well. That is so impressive for like the 1980s that Marvel just can't copy for some reason, even though they have millions of pounds. These people were working with no budget and look, look how amazing that is. So my number one, you all know, of course, it is, no, I'm not even going to joke about Time Lash. Of course, it is Trial of a Time Lord, my favourite Doctor Who story of all time. And that is no joke, I'm not even joking with this. I love this so much to death. It is such a clever idea, putting the Doctor on trial and having, spoilers by the way, slight spoilers, so just skip on to the to uh, probably like 10 seconds ahead, having the Doctor on trial with himself. Like these are such great ideas and making it like the trial room, a completely different episode, like this one's a mysterious planet, planet by Rob Holmes. Sadly this was, this, these two here, the ultimate foe and mysterious planet are the best parts about this story and they were sadly Rob Holmes' final scripts. But these are some of his best scripts out of the entirety of Doctor Who. The mind warp with Perry's ending, thinking she's dead and then she's actually come back. In New Who it's overdone and it's it's just no. But because Perry was such an interesting character and I love Brian, Be Brian Blessed's character in this, it just works so well and I love Perry's ending. And we even get to see her back in Audio Adventures as well. Terror of the Vervoids, ugh. It is a bit of a weird story and you can really tell that um, the Sixth Doctor and Mel were supposed to be together for like ages but Colin just can't act off this woman at all um, for the first like episode and then he finally gets his feet after a while. Then the ultimate foe, a two-parter that people say is completely rushed because they have to bring in the master. I think, yes, it slightly needs like five more minutes just to work things out. But the acting in it's amazing, the directions in it amazing, and the writing it to an extent written by three people has to be such such greatness ever in Doctor Who. I understand that the people behind this had such a bad time making this, but there were so many problems at the BBC at the time, and that's probably one more reason why I love this story so much. So yes, that was my 200 subscriber special. Thank all 211 of you for subscribing to this YouTube channel. Shout outs to loads of people. So thank all of you, seriously all of you. I still 99, all things Doctor Who. I love Doctor Who, the Doctor Who guide. You've all got quite a lot of Doctor Who in your name. Uh, Lucy Russell, Lucina the Blue Head Girl from the Future, literal all of you. I, I can't thank you all enough for 200 subscribers. It has mean the world to me that 211 of you so far have decided to click on my YouTube channel and thought that this person is worthy enough to have a subscriber from, my, from you. I thank you guys so much because I'm just a guy sitting here in my in my bedroom making videos uh, and all I want to do is make people laugh and I'm glad that I've done that for all of you. If you guys have a recommendation for a review that you want me to do, leave in the comments below or just say anything and I'll respond to you guys. Anyways, thank you guys and I'll see you next time. Goodbye. Now before this video starts, um, properly, properly? This is a very thirsty type of episode. Thirsty? The next evolution of Santarans. What do you want? Like. So, before this video starts pro properly. Properly. Now, number three, um, and number three and number four are quite entertaining. Entertained. Hello. No, what? Oh, you're not recording, are you? Yes, I am. Is it off now? No, goodbye. Oh. Hi, and... Uh, for fuck's sake! Now, before this video starts proper... For... <laughs>